So I'm Piers Cross. Um, I'm retired. I'm yeah. actually not retired, but I've, so I've been working in the water sector for since 1975. Um, so I guess that's 35 years in all sorts of capacities. But basically, ended up in in public policy in water. Okay, and uh, you're working now with the sanitation and water for all initiative, or how do you refer to it? What is it exactly? Well, it's an alliance. It's an alliance of um, water and sanitation uh, agencies. Look, there are a couple of truths in the sector. The one truth is that um, water remains under, it remains neglected and people don't recognize it. Decision making the world don't recognize it's important. We're coming to recognize this through climate change and other things because we're starting to see the effects of uh, when we don't have it, when it's poorly managed, and we see these on the television on our television screens every day, but it's generally not recognised. Much more allocation for health and education and other social sectors, but really, uh, water is unrecognised. The, the other thing that is true that is true about the water sector is that uh, there has been no real uh, way in which the water sector can have one communication with world leaders. So what I'm saying is the, the global architecture of the world managing this very decentralized topic water, which is a very local topic, has never really been properly set up. I mean, you know, when the UN uh, decided to make all its UN agencies to coordinate these good things in the world, well, you know, water got a bad deal. It's in 26 UN agencies. So there is absolutely no way of trying to uh, coordinate a global discussion on the topic of, of of water. Now there have been there have been several attempts, and the good news have been several attempts, most of them have failed. Um, what Sanitation Water for All is trying to learn from why those attempts failed and to try and put in place a way in which the, the world can have a better conversation about, about water. Okay, and, and where is this uh, alliance now? And in well, what stage is it? So the alliance has, um, look, it's, this is a big idea. It needs a good gestation period. Uh, the sector has already got a sort of you know, proliferation of um, ideas and, and it's a huge, uh, very poorly regulated marketplace. Um, so we've, for this thing to work, we've got to get a lot of people to think that it's useful. And we know that you do not need, you don't want yet another big initiative with yet another centre and yet another secretariat. We already have far too many people in sort of secretariat support roles in the sector and far too people that are doing things. So we don't want to add mm. to the problem. So the idea is to get an alliance of a great many organisations in six categories. In governments, they all have to be developing country governments. Uh, banks, they all invest uh, in water. Uh, the global water has a huge amount of aid, so the rich countries put a huge amount of money into this um, sector. Water is a civil society business as well. You know, there, there's really a, a, a mass of this, like 600 um, agencies, mm. civil society, have already joined SWA. So it's a, it's a huge contingent. Then there are all sorts of research bodies, um, training bodies, university bodies. Uh, and then there are the multilaterals, all the UN agencies and all the inter-country government agencies. So there's a lot of different stakeholders in this business. So what would be a, a concrete output, would you say, looking for, you know, maybe visioning a little bit, I think, uh, okay. where SWA is now, you're, you're beginning to formalize, I Three. think, to some extent. So looking ahead, what will it look up, just to wrap up? Three, three concrete outcomes. One is uh, more finance and better prioritise finance. Most of the aid in the water sector goes to middle income countries, not the poorest countries. And even when it goes to the poorest countries, it doesn't go to the poor. So better targeting. Uh, basically, Secondly, that we need to be able to hold people accountable for these wonderful commitments they make. You know, people throw out commitments about, you know, 0.7% of GDP or such a major allocation where they held accountable. So this is a form by which we can hold donors and banks and developing country uh, to accountable. And then there's a country level. I mean, to give you one specific example, at the first high level meeting, 
uh, Ghana basically got it. They got they we managed to get the global architecture to work at a country level. There was a, a significant a significant uh, uh, increase in budgetary allocation at the country level and uh, uh, a coming together of a whole lot of policy initiatives. That immediately had an impact which is basically going to translate into a large number of more sustainably managed the water and sanitation services in the country. Okay. So this, yeah. this is not just all talk, it's yeah. turning global architecture into something that delivers. Yeah, sounds very positive and uh, I hope we see it continue forward. Great, thank way. you very much. Okay.